Hi and welcome to Rose Red Homestead. We focus on self-reliance, food security and emergency preparedness and we do lots and lots of pressure canning. That's what we're going to do today and um, we appreciate you watching our videos. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. There's lots of valuable information, not just from us. We have a wonderful community who make comments that are very, very worth your time reading and uh, share. We also have a Facebook page and you're welcome to go to that Facebook page and it's really easy to share on Facebook as well. So we will get started on sirloin and mushroom gravy. What, wait, gravy? I didn't think we could can gravy. Well, I'll tell you how we can do that and still stay within recommended practice when we come right back. going to do is to take this 12 inch cast iron skillet I'm going to put it in the oven and I'm going to put the oven on for 500 degrees it needs to heat up to 500 before we can start the second that the oven dings and lets us know it's up to 500 we'll bring it over here and put it back on our butane stove on medium heat now the big question is how can we possibly pressure can gravy well, I call it gravy in the title. It won't be gravy until after you open up the jar. I am using a recipe that is modified from a cast iron skillet cookbook that I have. It just looked so wonderful. I could not help myself. I just thought, oh, I've got to turn this into something that I can use for gravy. So in thinking about that, and knowing that the USDA has a can your own soup process that is perfectly recommended, that's what I decided to do. So today we are going to can this gravy using only the meat and the mushrooms and the onions and then broth. And then when we get ready to use it, uh, we will open up the jar, put it in the pan, and thicken it with the flour that was called for in the original recipe, which we can't use. We, don't, we do not can with flour. The great thing about this recipe is that the ingredients that we are going to use are all fresh. There's no canned mushroom soup or cream of chicken soup. We are doing everything from scratch before it goes into the jars. So when we get up to 500 degrees, we will be back. That oven is going to ding momentarily, but we're set up with our butane stove. We have the back door cracked. We have our carbon monoxide alarm all set. So we are in the safety zone. There we go. So I'm going to turn it on and get the pan. Very roses. What? Beautiful roses. Oh. What a great picture. Thank you. I wonder who gave those to me. I don't know. Okay, pan is very, very hot. First thing we're going to do is put in a couple of tablespoons of oil. And the minute that starts to smoke, then we will add the meat. Now, this is sirloin roast. It has been salted and peppered and it's ready to go in and all we're going to do is just brown it. Now this is really going to be almost done. That is what the rules of making soup, that is what the recommendations are for when we make our own soup recipe. Almost done in terms of this would be about medium rare. All right, I'm going to remove this now to a bowl. I've rinsed out the meat bowl. I'm going to put it back in that bowl. That was a full two pounds of bite-sized 
sirloin roast. Now we're going to put in one pound of sliced mushrooms. One large onion sliced thinly and two cloves of garlic minced. And about half a teaspoon of salt. Mixing these up a little bit and then we're going to put the lid on. We just want these veggies to give up their juices. Now we'll let those cook, kind of steam for a few minutes until they are just to the right point. These are done. I'm going to set the lid aside. Stir things up a little bit. And we're going to let those juices cook off and the vegetables brown just a little bit. While that is happening, I'm going to get some broth and mix in a couple of things. This is about a cup of broth. We're going to need more for the jars. Into this cup of broth, I am going to put two teaspoons of tomato paste, In this little bowl, I have one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and two teaspoons of red wine vinegar. That's going in this liquid. I hear the veggies sizzling. We want them to brown just a little bit. I'm turning off the fire. And I'm going to just add this to moisten things up a little bit and to get the flavors of the Worcestershire sauce and the vinegar and the tomato paste right into the veggies. Now, essentially what I'm going to do is to divide these ingredients in quarters because I have four quarts here and so I want about one-fourth of the ingredients in each jar. Won't be perfect, but it will be close. I just sprinkled a little bit of thyme on here. I neglected to add that in when I added the broth mixture. It was a fourth of a teaspoon of thyme. I'm eyeballing about one-fourth of the meat here to put in each jar. And now I'm going to get the veggies. What the USDA says is to fill jars about half full of the solids and then fill all the way up to the headspace line with broth. And that's what we're going to do next with all of this lovely drippings and juice in this frying pan, I am simply going to dump all of this juice into the broth so that we have um, equal distribution of the good stuff. Now I am putting a pinch of fresh parsley in on the top of all these. And now this hot broth is going in. 
up to the fill line, one inch below the top of the jar. This, it will be such a great meal because the meat is in the jar. So all we would need to do is put it over mashed potatoes, which we have in our freeze-dried foods, or we could make ahead of time. It could be over noodles. Right, here's the last one. We're going to come out almost even. Good grief. Exactly even. A little tiny bit left. <laughs> Not much. In fact, I can just put it right in here. Checking for air bubbles. There is plenty of liquid in here now so that we can use convection heat transfer, which is the most efficient, fastest kind. My paper towel is dampened with vinegar. I'm going to wipe the rims. My lids are washed. They've been sitting out on this dish towel draining. Rings have been washed. Finger tight. I have the Nesco canner sitting over there. I'm going to do these in the Nesco this afternoon. I'm going to process them for 90 minutes and then let the canner cool down on its own. When that is finished, we'll be back to look at the finished product. So see you then. All right, the canner just finished. Um, the pressure just dropped all the way, so now we can open it and see what we've got. Okay, it looks like soup, which is what we wanted it to look like. Smells fabulous. We had no siphoning. Excellent. I've had very little siphoning in the carry. A little bit. So these are now, um, they'll cool. And then when we take them out of the jar, I'll add flour. This will be a fabulous gravy to have over potatoes or noodles or whatever we want. I mean, we could even eat a soup just exactly like that. But it is a um, very healthy with the meat and the onions and the mushrooms and um, I can hardly wait. So thanks for joining us on this new adventure making gravy by pressure canning. We'll see you next time.